Alright everyone, I'm going to be comparing the temperatures between the Corsair H60 and a custom water loop. Now I'm going to be doing this video because I've not seen any videos out there comparing temperatures between either a closed loop or a custom loop or just the H60 or the H100 really. So I'm just going to be putting this out there for anyone that either are deciding to buy a custom loop or sticking with the closed one. So I'm going to be comparing the temperatures by screenshots because I didn't actually have a camera at the time to record them live. So screenshots are better than nothing to be honest. Oh and uh, this is the this is the H60 that I was using. Just so you know that, well, I don't have any reason to lie about the temperatures, really. So, at idle on the H60, they're reaching around about 30 to 35 at max, at 4.2 gigahertz. Now, under load, they're reaching 60 to 65 at the same gigahertz. Now, for the custom loop that I've got in here, which is the EK L240 custom loop, at idle at the same hertz, around about 20 to 33 at max. So it, there's not much difference in idle wise. But when you actually put it under load or you're actually gaming, the temperatures do get a lot better. As you can see here, they're in the 50s, reaching n nearly to the early 60s, 61. As you can see here, I'll bring up the under load for the H60 again. 60 to 65. Fifty to sixty-one. Now, with the H sixty, I overclocked it to four point five, which I don't have have any screenshots of that because I was just messing around, and it did jump up to around about seventy Celsius, nearly seventy-five. So. I'll keep this up here because I'll be running Prime 95 now actually and I'll open this hardware monitor because what I was, I was just messing around before and what I didn't know is that I actually increased it by another 300 hertz and it's actually a lot cooler in the mid 20s reaching to 31 at max I don't know if it's because my room's cooler but it's really weird how it just stays the same or is even under the temperatures to be honest <laughs> now I will put it under load with Prime 95 uh, test oh no that's not it Wherever touch test. Now, as you can see here, at 4.5, under load, 50 into the 60. It's barely reaching the 60s. It's going, it's jumping between 59 and 60. So, if you can compare it with these temperatures at 4.2, as you can see, 50 to 61 50 to 60 it's, round, it's roughly the same but it's dropped by a few celsius so I didn't really expect it to actually stay the same temperatures even though I overclocked it by a lot more I'm going to either overclock it by another 300 see how the temperatures are there so if you're really deciding whether to get a custom loop or not 
if you have the money or if you just want it because it looks good I actually bought it because I'm gonna get a GPU water block because my fan on the GPU at the moment is loud when I'm gaming it reaches around about 90 to 100% fan speed and the temperatures are within 70 I know that's not that bad but I'd rather get it a lot cooler so I'm going to be water cooling it now as I said if you're not really overclocking or if you're overclocking a bit mine was at 3.4 gigahertz of stock me i5 I overclocked it to 4.2 with me h60 and the temperatures as you've seen were 60s 65 at max so if you're not a big overclocker and you just want to keep your CPU cool stick with the closed loop like the h60 but if you want to overclock a lot say 4.5 or over I would recommend going with the custom loop to be honest because as I said my temperatures did reach into the 70s now obviously if you are water cooling your GPU that will be another reason to get the custom loop so I mean I got it because it looks awesome in my rig and it cools your temperatures by a hell of a lot and also when I do my graphics card so it's up to you really if you want to keep at the closed loop not overclock by a lot or if you're not bothered about overclocking but if you are go with the custom loop I'll just turn Prime Night 5 off oh and I did actually increase my let's get me voltages up. So my voltages from a four point two they were actually at one point one seven seven five and from a four point five gigahertz with three hundred more on the overclocking one point two. So I had to increase it by a little bit, not much. I could probably drop the temperatures a little bit more by decreasing the voltages and I'll mess around with that a little bit later on but other than that uh, leave any comments if you have any questions about my rig or temperatures or anything else really cheers see ya